Hi, this is Josh with The Gray Sheet. I'm here this morning with Mr. Gary Atkins, the president of the American Numismatic Association. He's also associated with David Lawrence Rare Coins in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Uh, Gary, thank you for your time this morning, sir. It's always nice meeting with you. And uh, first things first, uh, what's what's going on now with the ANA? Any, any big news coming up around the corner that we can look forward to? Well, thank you, Josh. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. Yeah, the ANA is involved in uh, a lot of uh, efforts right now to improve the hobby, to build more, uh, more of a collector base, and and so on. As you know, the mm -hmm. the demographic typically of the collectors nowadays is in, you know my age, older guys like me, and so we're trying to get more younger people involved in the hobby. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we're make, you know we've made some great strides in that regard. Um, our ANA membership has been essentially. You know, rather stagnant for the last few years. We have some, seen some increases, and one of the things that's encouraging to me is that we're seeing more um, what I would call thirty-somethings coming back into ah. the marketplace. Maybe uh, younger people that you know collected when they were kids, right. and uh, you know then they went to school and college and you know started a career and so on. And now they're at a point where they're you know maybe settled in, got a family started, and they maybe have a few extra dollars a uh, disposable income where they can start collecting again. So that's encouraging to see that. And I would think too. Uh, now, of course, it's important to target all people as far as demographics. But I would think that thirty to fifty year old range, those people who are working, they've got full time jobs, they have maybe a little bit of time in the weekends, perhaps, or in the evenings to enjoy a recreational activity. Yeah. That I would imagine is a prime a prime area of growth. For it the is. ANA. It is. Yeah. It is definitely is. And obviously, we want to appeal to younger people too, because that's where you start them out. Right. Uh, getting you know kids collecting, and I think part of the challenge there is. Uh, getting into their world in a sense and you know whether it's through electronics mm -hmm. you know uh, young young kids nowadays are they do a lot of YouTube, YouTube uh, viewing That's so true. so we if do. the ANA can get involved in YouTube maybe and you know get some more in, uh, input in that then that yeah. that'll be helpful gamification is another aspect of it oh. that's important so mm -hmm. kids love to play games and that type of thing so you know we're looking at ideas maybe to create some kind of a game that kids can be involved in one of the things I noticed yesterday, I was at, or the day before yesterday, actually, mm -hmm. I was at the Mint Forum right. that the Mint sponsored, and they were presenting ideas that they have now. They've created some cartoon characters uh, to try to appeal to the younger audience, right. and uh, that seems to be going over pretty good. So somebody made the suggestion, why don't you, you know, have a monthly cartoon, a new, you know, uh, use these same characters, create a monthly that. cartoon yeah. that the kids can go on YouTube and, and check it out, and, you know, so maybe <laughs> that'll draw in a new audience. We hope so anyway, so... But you're right, the, the, that 30 and up uh, demographic is really the key demographic in, in current, uh, you know, currently promoting the hobby and so on. Right. So, and typically those, those folks have younger children too. And so if, you know, it, it, it works both ways. If the kids get interested in coins, the parents get interested in coins right. and vice versa. So either we'll, we'll take either one of those. And it builds uh, a bond. You get oh, your, yeah, absolutely. Your kids yeah, involved a, or grandkids for that matter. Yeah, it's a great, uh, it's a great thing for kids to be involved. And I think that's probably one of our biggest challenges is, you know, most young people nowadays really don't understand finance. They don't right. understand compounding of interest and simple things like that. So, uh, if we can focus, too, on education, getting more um, financial education out, mm -hmm. understanding how money plays a role in society and how coins play a role in history right. and science. And you, you, could, you, know, you could take and create a coin class just about with any subject you can think of, whether it's art, history, science, mathematics, uh, any field of study, basically. And I think that's uh, probably part of the uh, challenge and part of the reason that the ANA is more getting more involved in looking at curriculum for mm -hmm. uh, not only grade school, high school, but also in the college level as well. Because you could create uh, some great uh, classes, uh, elective classes, let's say, for, for students that are in, whether they're studying to be an accountant or whether they're studying history or whatever, sure. and tie coins into that. Uh, and make it a great uh, and paper money as well. So I don't want to leave out paper money. That's a big every aspect. niche in the hobby. There exactly. Has an important absolutely. Place. Absolutely. Yeah. But collectibles in general nowadays, um, younger generation is not really too in tune with collectibles, antiques, and things like that. Right. They just, you know, it's not their thing. So uh, we have to be engaged. We have to be uh, continually looking at what we're doing and how mm -hmm. we're doing it, and and uh, try to create. Uh, uh, new avenues uh, for the collecting hobby. So that's it, excellent. It, yeah, yeah. And one last question I'm thinking of too now, of course, from the collector and dealer side now, Gary. What do you think that we can do on 
on the you know in in uh, roots in the ground, so to speak. What can we do as collectors and dealers to help encourage other people to become not only engaged with the hobby but become active participants in the hobby? You yeah. think there are things well, we can do? I, um, actually, my article that's coming out this uh, this month in the Numismatist uh, mm-hmm. for the Christmas edition, if you want to call it that. Sure. Uh, I'm talking about getting family together and. Um, if you look back on history and Franklin Roosevelt, uh, the Roosevelt dime is kind of a, you know, it's been around forever. It's yeah. kind of a, you know, a stagnant coin if you want to look at it that way. Uh, no new, you know, no new design or anything like that. We basically just have a bunch of dead presidents on our coins, and people would like to see changes to that. So, uh, you know, we talked to the Mint about potentially changing that Roosevelt dime series because oh. that's a series that. You know, you can collect fairly easily. Right. It's not an expensive set. No major keys or anything. Yeah, there, yeah. yeah. And uh, so it's a great series to kind of get the introduction to collecting. That's a good idea. Um, so it's a simple series. And uh, one of the in- anniversaries that's coming up here in 2021 mm-hmm. is the, uh, hun- uh, the well, what would it be? I think it's like 90th anniversary. Anyway, when, or 1941. So what is that? 60, 80 years. Right. 80 year anniversary of Franklin Roosevelt's famous... Uh, four Freedom speech, oh, and if you're familiar with the Four Freedoms, right. uh, Norman Rockwell did a, a painting series on the Four Freedoms, sure. and uh, so I think that the Roosevelt dime is a great introductory um, coin to get young people involved in collecting. Mm-hmm. And so, in my article that I did for the Numismatist, I encouraged collectors uh, to, when they're at their Christmas dinners and so on, right, you know, get some silver Roosevelt dimes. You can buy them for about a dollar a piece. They're not real expensive. Sure. And give all the kids a silver Roosevelt dime, you know, in a neat little package idea. or something. Yeah. And uh, that may spark an interest and, in, you know, tell them a little history about it and right. Franklin Roosevelt and, and the Four Freedoms, the things that we're, you know, thankful for and so on. And get young people interested in collecting. I think that's that would be a fantastic way to, to start anyway. So well, What a way to tie in art and history and, of course, family. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. In one you got to get everybody package. involved in the, in the process. So yeah. it's uh, it's great if you can do that. Well, Gary, we're very happy with all the great things happening at the ANA, and we, we're thankful to you for your great leadership of the ANA. And I appreciate, uh, that. I appreciate yeah. your time this morning here as well, talking with me about the hobby and where it's going. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, the the uh, ANA is doing a lot of things. The, you know, online we're working, looking right now at online education, mm-hmm. uh, so that we can bring uh, education to you know the masses, if you will. Right. Right now, the, the ANA does a great job of providing seminars at you know our summer seminars, for example, and also uh, seminars that we do with major conventions and so on. But if we could get online education developed, uh, and it's, it's it's a challenge. Believe me, it's a challenge to do that. But if we can get that done, I think that will appeal to a lot of people. Absolutely. Uh, get a lot more people interested in collecting and that type of thing. So, I, you know, we're really working hard on trying to develop something like that uh, and improving, you know, all the aspects of ANA. We've got a great library. Uh, oh. A lot of people don't even utilize the library as effectively as it could be. Right. We've got a fantastic museum in Colorado Springs, um, and we're just uh, now uh, ending up our World War uh, one exhibit there and changing that over is going to be a uh, history of the British Empire. Oh, wow. Which will be kind of fascinating yeah. for, for collectors to, to know about that. And now the neat thing about it is that you don't have to visit the museum to see it all right. because we have virtual, we have a virtual tour right online. If you go to the ANA website, money.org, mm-hmm. you can find that virtual tour on, and it's really neat to go through that and just see all the different displays that are there at the museum. And, of course, if you get to Colorado Springs, I highly recommend visiting the actual museum. As an A&A member, I've, I've visited the online museum before, and it's really just an incredible offering that you yeah. have for the public to get a, get, a, get a glimpse of all the incredible things at the headquarters in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Sure, sure. Yeah. And, uh, and we're working to try to, you know, have better outreach in that regard, too, right. and, and bringing the museum to the public, if you will. Uh, and we do that through our conventions. We had a fantastic convention in Philadelphia and had some great oh, rarities. Oh, that was an incredible show, yeah, Gary. Yeah, and they had some great rarities on display there. So it was yeah. pretty pretty phenomenal, yeah. Well, we're very grateful for what you do, I and mean, you and your whole team at the ANA. And I know it's not easy work at all. Yeah. And it's a brave new world today that we're facing, as we've discussed. Absolutely. Well, I we think... got a great we got great people at ANA. The yeah. staff there is fantastic. Kim Kick is a great executive director, and she's doing a great job on, you know, uh, helping us move forward with that, the ANA. So it's a challenge, and uh, we hope we're up to it. So uh, we we appreciate the public and their support and uh, all of the great uh, sponsors and donors that we have. Uh, So it's 
it's a it's a tough job, but we're we're working hard to make it better. It takes a village, right? That's right, absolutely. <laughs> Gary, sir, thank you for your time. I really yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, great uh, talking to you. Thank you. Mm-hmm.